This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. In this AE tutorial, we're going to talk about several glitch effect techniques that can be applied to your logos or any type of motion graphics. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we're creating an awesome glitch effect with several different steps in it. There's not much to say about it. So let's go ahead and jump into our tutorial and let's get started. All right, so here we are inside of After Effects and all I did was create a background. You can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna have this pre-made. And then the first thing you wanna do is bring in your logo or a title or whatever main element that you, you know, want to be the center of your glitch. And when you have that title, that logo, uh, what you want to do is grab that layer, go to layer pre-compose, and we'll want to call this placeholder. This way we can change it out with anything else later in time because we're going to start, you know, editing this composition. The first technique we're going to talk about is the RGB splitting, one of the most basic effects doing an RGB glitch. So what we'll do is go to effect channel and we'll grab shift channels. And where it says green, we need to set this to full off, and where it says blue, we'll set this full off as well. So only red is on. Then we'll go up to edit, duplicate, and we'll have two placeholders here. And we'll come here to the top layer, we'll turn off the red, set the full off, and set the green back onto green. We'll duplicate this one, so we'll have three placeholders now. We'll turn off the green, and we'll come here to blue, and set this to blue. So we have you know blue, green, red, RGB, right? So what we'll do is grab the first two placeholders here, we'll toggle switch the modes here at the bottom until we see the blend mode, and we'll set these two to screen. So now I'll be back to your main color, whatever that is. So now we can hit PR keyboard for position and we can start to offset this and you see, okay, now we're creating more of a split here and that's great. And if you go through each individual placeholder, you get different, you know, different color palettes. So that's cool. So we'll grab the top one and instead of just animating the Y value here, let's animate one value. So let's grab position here, right click it and click on separate dimensions. So now we have X and Y by itself and I only want to animate the X. So what we'll do here is all click the stopwatch for X position and we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis four comma 200, close parenthesis so it looks like that. So now we'll just have this and you know, it's kind of cool. And what we'll do here to turn it off, we'll maybe have this go on for like three seconds and we'll go to edit split layer and we'll hit UU on our keyboard to bring up our affected parameters and we'll just delete the wiggle. This way it'll just stop and that's cool. And one thing we can do, we want to make sure we do, is toggle switch modes and turn on motion blur for our placeholder layers. This way there'll be this way there'll be some motion blur going on here. So for our second technique, I want to start tearing up the entire composition by adding our own handmade distortion. So we'll go up to layer new solid and we'll just call it uh, noise. I spelled that wrong. And we'll go to effect noise and grain and we'll add fractal noise. Set the fractal type to max set the noise type to block and let's increase the contrast and bring down the brightness so like 200 you know 30 on the contrast and a negative 160 on the brightness so we'll open the transform menu and we'll uncheck uniform scaling and we can scale the width like crazy so you're gonna have to just adjust this maybe go to like 1500 or so and maybe we'll bring up the brightness by a little bit so we have a little bit more there cool and i'm going to come here to the evolution options and i'll click the stopwatch for random seed and i'm going to type in time asterisk five so that means this will change every five frames now we'll go ahead and we'll go up to layer pre-compose and we'll call it map move all attributes into new comp click okay we'll turn this layer off we'll go up to layer new adjustment layer and we'll rename this to displace We'll go up to Effect, Distort, and we'll add Displacement Map. Set the map layer to our map, so number two there. So you can adjust the vertical and horizontal displacement, and you'll get some you know, interesting glitches going on here. However, I want to set the horizontal displacement down to zero and set the vertical displacement all the way up to like 150 or so. Now, you get all these black edges here. You can check on wrap pixels around if you don't want that but what I want to do here is I'm unchecking that go into back into our map layer go to our noise layer go to effect keying and I want to add extract and increase the black point so now we have a transparent layer just to that point then we'll go back into our main comp and here's currently what we have with our displacement map and if you want to lower the number of you know displacements there go back into our map go to noise and we can just decrease the brightness. So for our third technique, I want to be able to juxtaposition the entire composition 
um, in a unique way. So what I'm gonna do is go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll call this tile. We'll go to effect stylize, and we'll grab motion tile. And by messing with the tile center, you know, we can create obviously different you know, slides of this and animate it. This is what I want to do. I want to alt click the tile center and, and I'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis two comma 100 close parenthesis, just like that. And now it'll be moving around like crazy. And one thing here, we have rough edges here. If you want to keep that, that's great. But one thing we can check on is mirror edges and it'll just be moving around the entire composition. And that's cool. And what we'll do here is we'll have this up for maybe like a second or so. And we'll split this layer and we'll bring the endpoint in on the second layer. We'll have it off for a little bit and then we can split the layer, have it going, you know, kind of just have it on and off periodically. So for our fourth technique, I want to be able to use separate glitch elements that we can bring into our main composition here just to help spice it up. And these are called glitch transitions. Um, and there's a handful of resources where you can get glitch stock elements, a quick you know, search up can allow you to do that and this is one thing that I've been using for years when I'm doing this type of motion graphics just bringing in stock elements to help spice it up within a matter of seconds and I got these glitch transitions off of Envato elements and simply you know with Envato elements you can download over a million assets every single month at the same price so for example I can come in here and type in glitch and say hey I want a video template I want an After Effects glitch template and by looking at this, there are so many glitch templates in here that I can easily download. And with this, I can download unlimited After Effects templates. They're currently 13,000, you know, stock footage, sound effects, music, you know, WordPress, you know, websites, and so much more. And simply for our glitch transitions, I typed in glitch and went to stock video, and there's already a handful of just glitch assets that you can bring into your After Effects project. So if you want to check out Envato Elements, be sure to check our links in the video description. So for our glitch elements, I can bring them into our composition and set the blend mode of these to screen. And now we have an extra asset in here and I can bring in some more. And just within under a minute, by bringing in our glitch stock footage, we're able to take this composition and just add a lot more level of detail to our entire composition. And that's why I like using stock because you can just get a lot of you know work done really quick and it just brings tremendous value to it. Now, for our fifth and final technique, we got to be able to tie this all together and really make this look like an awesome glitch effect. So, so what we'll do is grab all of our layers and we'll go to layer pre-compose and we'll just call it all. Look okay. Then we'll go up to effects channel and we'll grab shift channels again. So we're going to do the RGB once again. So we'll turn off everything. Uh, turn on blue. Duplicate the layer. So turn off the red. Turn on green. Duplicate the layer. And go to blue. So, so now we have all three of these set up. Go to blend mode and set these to screen. And then I'm going to effect stylize and we'll grab motion tile again. And we'll alt click the stopwatch for tile center. And we'll type in wiggle, open from C2, comma 200, close from C. And then we can check on mirror edges. This way everything will stay inside its own composition and nice. Then we'll go to effect blur and sharpen and we'll grab CC radial fast blur. And we can set this up to like 75 and set the zoom to brightest and nice. And we come here to like say like two seconds, split this layer and delete all the effects except for the shift channels. And then it's back to normal. And after it's all said and done, here's all five of our techniques combined. So I hope this glitch effect tutorial has been helpful. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. No ways. Be creating.